Hi, everybody. Welcome to Coach Playbook with Paul Lapolis, your home for elite CFL breakdown analysis. Today, we're going to look at Winnipeg's offense versus Toronto defense in the Grey Cup. What happened? Uh, some spectacular plays by Toronto. Uh, they really had Winnipeg's number all season. Now, before I get into that, let's start talking about, I know we're a couple of days removed from the Grey Cup. All the things, oh my God, dump this guy, fire this guy. Don't forget, Winnipeg has been uh, the rock as it comes to the team that you want to emulate wins their games, went finishes in first place. They have struggled in their last three gray cups is correct. Um, but you know, that doesn't mean there's wholesale change There obviously has to be some change that goes on. I, I love everybody telling me, ah, I got to come back, bring Paul Lapolis back. Well in 16, 17 and 18, did you think that when I lost in the playoffs, 2018, we had a really good football team, went to Calgary, wasn't able to do things very well offensively. Um, so, like, you just got to kind of relax on some of those things. You have a very talented team there with very talented coaches that I believe in. All right, and what struggled? Here are a couple of the biggest issues. Like, why didn't Brady touch the ball anymore? They only had 21 plays including one of the victory offense plays. So they had basically 20 plays in the first half. Toronto held on to the football. And then there was a couple two and outs uh, for the Bombers. And they had a couple drop balls. So, like, you don't get a lot of plays. And I've been there as a play caller. You can't get everyone touches. And if you're sitting in second and long, which they had a lot of second and longs, Brady Oliver is not going to touch the football early on. So you need football plays to get everybody involved. And if you're sitting in second and long, that's going to be hard to overcome. Uh, but hats off to the Toronto defense. So I, I don't know if we've given enough credit. Three three games in a row, they really uh, p- performed at a very high level against this unit. So here's some of the stats. Uh, the Bombers threw for, who were 15 of 33 passing, 202 yards, zero touchdowns, four interceptions, uh, 45% completion percentage. Uh, there were four drops. I, I called drops in the game, so I think that could have helped the cause for the Bombers. There's one fumble and four interceptions. They finished minus three turnover margin. You're going to lose when you finish minus three. On second and seven plus three of 11 for 27%. Excellent by the Toronto defense. They've done much better at getting better at that down and distance. Uh, Zach was 15 of 30, 50%, 202 yards. We know he got injured. It sounds like it was pretty bad. Uh, hats off to him for, you know, stitching it up and getting back into the game. Um, Terry Wilson was 0 for 3. Uh, but Brady had 11 carries, 84 yards, along a 35. So I thought the defensive line did a good job of holding him in check. Talk about defensively. Winton McManus was all over the field. He had six uh, total tackles. He had three knockdowns, pass knockdowns, and he had an interception for 58 yards. Uh, so outstanding achievement by this Toronto defense. They earned it. If you think about the last two games of the season against Montreal, they get a bunch of takeaways. Um, and then in this game, once again, they got a bunch of takeaways. So they were spectacular. Uh, before I go, this is starting to head into off season. So I would say this, please subscribe to the page and you hit the bell to turn your notifications on because I won't be posting as much anymore. There's not as many games, but I will be posting things. Uh, you already have Coach's Podcast with Paul Lapolis. Uh, it's got a couple of Western Dresser, Matt Nichols. I'll be posting more stuff as it goes on, so you you know, but it won't be all the time, and I may not be posting it to other social media sites. So make sure you turn notifications on. All right, let's take a look at the Winnipeg offense versus Toronto defense in the Grey Cup. It's the thing I thought Toronto did a really nice job all game defensively, keeping the Bombers – you know, on second, you know, keeping them manageable yardage gains on first down. This is first and 15 because of penalty. What are the Bombers trying to do? They're bringing a player back on the zone read. And this is like a player coming behind the line of scrimmage. Now, normally you do this to get this this defensive back leveraged. And what does that mean? Chasing it from afar. But I like the Argos game plan. They rock and roll this. So he goes and plays free safety. And Metier is watching to see. And he says, oh, I'm going to go take it. And that's what happens. He gets the leverage back. And what I mean, he's in a better position to cover Wilson coming across the field. Dark Angelo, which I want to call Dark Angel because that's like a pretty cool superhero name. Forces Zach to throw it. Ball's out. And Mechier's right there. You can see him just tracking it the whole time. And as you watch him, track, 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 goes, tackle, gain a two. So 
Argos did a great job of forcing that all game. Uh, game inches, first and 10. Man coverage across the board. Kenny Lawler breaks out on a deep dig, caught on the sideline. But unfortunately, we always talk about a game of inches. And again, I'm going to go fast with these. Show you this right here. Right foot just out of bounds. So that, again, some of the problems the Bombers had on first and 10 was just, you know, being in second along because they weren't executed on first and 10. Like I said, I'm going to kind of rip through these. This is the third time I've done Once without a microphone, once the video settings look terrible. This is my third time trying this. So I'm going to just, normally I cut the plays up. I'm just going to run them all through and talk through them. Eight-yard curl. 12-yard curl, 8-yard curl, hitch. Now here you're going to run in and out, in and out, and then a vertical. And this is man coverage, and I'll show you. Zach's looking over here, and the two man players get confused. Usually you want to stay with the deep route and figure out which one you take. Uh, they don't declare immediately. He's underneath it. He just sits down underneath him. So those two are going to be high. Zach you know, that's a great throw for Zach to take and get the yardage. For some reason, he gets his eyes off of that. I think you throw it right there. He's getting the first down on second and 10. Um, you can see from his end zone, he's looking over here to the left. And then he's got to flip his hips, tries to find Dembski, somebody right at Dembski. They're off the field. So, you know, got to be a little bit better converting. There were three, I believe, of 17 on second and long. Conversions wise, on uh, they were, yeah, they were second and seven. They were three eleven. Shouldn't say three of seventeen. Three of eleven. Okay, penetration is what kills run game. That's what this football team did with these four players up front. Uh, Jake Ceresna here gets some penetration on on this outside zone play. So the path is this way. Working up to that player, the center is going to try to take Winton Manis over. Dobson's going to take that one over, and they're going to all keep scooping in this area. Um, you know, just how quick he is. He beats Patty before uh, Patty Newfeld can get his right foot down. Patty needs to be a little bit wider in expecting this. You would like Lofton to help him a little bit more. He doesn't have to leave so fast, especially when inside move. Try to help him and then work up. But this is what Jake Sarazen does. Quick, fast, gets in, stops Brady, and now Brady has to cut back. Kolonkowski, like, sees uh, two players. I think you'd want him to take that one, and then at least Brady can find a crease and try to make that one miss. But good negative yardage play by the Argonauts. Do such a good job stopping the run. All right, second and long. Little deep rub route, what I would call a like, uh, switch route for a big explosive play. This is a 30 plus play, and this led to a touchdown. So there is a lot of man coverage at times. So deep man, deep man. Downfield, Kenny Lawler, if you watch, he's going to angle right here, and he's going to stop right on his feet, and he's going to go here. They're just going to switch. Wilson and him are going to switch responsibilities. If they can get a natural rub, like right there, that's what they're trying to do. So you see uh, the field corner, the boundary corner just chases inside, and then they switch. It just happens really late. Okay? Or they don't switch, I should say. But that gets the pick they want. Zach throws a great ball. The free safety can't make a play outside the numbers. Everybody's fired up over here. So watch it from this angle. Okay, we're going to be over here now. Camera's on the other side. So right here, Kenny Lawler, I'll pause it. Right here, he's done enough to force his shoulders to turn and then get the natural rub he wants. And Zach throws a great ball, leading to their first touchdown. Winton McManus uh, was spectacular. Six tackles. Uh, three knockdowns and an interception. Okay, when you have four people out, which they do right here, they have two outbreaking routes, two vertical routes, 
on this side of the field. There's just going to be zone areas that you just can't cover everything. And that's what happens right here. There's enough space. Throw it out to Brady. Get the ball in a position to Brady and make that play. You know, it could be a little bit outside. You could have let him away from the middle linebacker. Either way, they got to finish with this. But McManus right there makes a play. Ball's knocked down. This is what he did inside all game. I got a number of clips to show you how good he was. Dembski breaks out, expecting the ball. Okay, just got to secure it. And again, this is a first, second and five that takes him off the field. Really like this draw play on second and seven. Let's try to slow down the pass rush. Really good run by Brady. Strong lower body. A couple of points you want to watch. Tunde Delake, he's going to blitz off the edge. Watch Kenny Lawler come in to block him. Boom. He forces him wide. Now he's not going to make a play on the draw. Watch what he does, though. He looks, hey, Winton McManus, let me throw you down. Hey, Mechier, let me block you. So really good effort by Kenny Lawler. Good physicality by him. Now he's going to get him upfield. These two are going to find the middle linebacker if possible. He's going to create a space for him to go. Lofton's going to find somebody here. Watch this cut by Brady. Boom, outside, back in. Good lower body strength. And then the physicality. This is what we talk about. McManus, watch what happens. He gets pushed. He spins out of it and makes a tackle. It helps on the tackle. Pretty amazing play by him. All right, pretty good drive here by the Bombers. This is a RPO play. You're going to see pressure and blitz from these two players. What does Zach do? He's got to throw right in that space. Excellent. Okay, on a, on a skinny post. Really good. Let's go to this angle here. All right. So the line is going to block like this and pull a guard. And they're going to have a kick out block. So this is a run play, but if you have people blitzing, go ahead, find your post in the middle of the field. That's what happens. Nice shot here. Great recognition by Zach. There's nobody in this space when those two come. Just a tough one-on-one for any corner in the Canadian Football League. Let's stay with rhythm. This drive's all about rhythm. Here's first and 10 again. This is a big play on the outside. Play action pass from the outside of the field. How does this work out? I love it. So you got a receiver right here. He's going to block down like it's a, it's a run play. Brady's going to go out in the flat. You're going to have a guy faking outside zone. So everybody's running like this, like they're running outside zone. Damsky's going to come through here, run this way. And Kenny Lawler with a waggle is going to run a post. And then we're going to see a receiver come down. I'll pause it one more time. Damsky goes right through the middle. There's the post player. It's going to take those two. The action's going to take those two. He's going to go with Brady and watch what happens. Right? Double on that one. Dembski did his job. He did his job. There's nobody here for this one. Zach does his job. So really good position. Good rhythm drive for the Bombers here. But they're doing well on first and 10. Bunch of good yardage gains. Put them in second and medium situations or first downs on first down. Uh, I believe they finish with a kick on this drive. They finish with a field goal. This is, I think, a quarterback draw. I'm not sure. But this is a block. This is a block. This is a block. You swing him. And if the linebackers all stay in the middle, you throw the swing. <laughs> if the linebackers leave, then the quarterback can keep the ball because you should have enough blockers. That's what I believe is happening. But I'm going to go to the end zone to show you what happens as Zach. This is the block that's critical. We ex He leaves. He'll stay here. He'll work up and block him. He'll block him. He'll block him. But Ralph Hawley really does a good job getting push. I talked about this defensive front always getting push. Uh, this is just a power move where he just drives the center straight back and actually – takes kind of Zach off. I think Zach wanted to be right there, and I think he's going to be possibly one-on-one, -on -one, or Dobson is going to be in a position to block him and Zach's this way. 
But Zach just gets turned around. Twist turns him back. And a good stop by this Toronto Argonauts defense. Big interception here. The corner, Benji Franklin makes a spectacular play on the football. Um, They're running what's called the corner route in two hitches. And this is what you call a smash read, a high-low corner read. You're trying to read what the defense does. And right here, he's inside and low, and he's high, and he's looking at the quarterback, and he's driving back. So he sees this corner route. So he's just going to run underneath it when Zach throws it. Uh, that's This is a concept the, uh, that the Bombers throw a lot of, but they've got to see this picture. With everybody this way, take this throw on the outside. So Zach kind of on his three, I, I, he doesn't see what Benji's doing, and this is a spectacular play. It should really just be an incompletion, but that's an amazing play by him. Let's go to this angle here. Again, corner route, one hitch, two hitches. And the deeper he gets and the more inside he is, the more the ball should go on the outside. So he played high and over the top. That's where the ball needs to go. Great angle, but great play by Benji. So this is the second play I'm going to say by Winton McManus. So not sure the concept but it could be Dembski just on an option route. But watch Dembski. He breaks out, waiting for uh, Winton to come out, and then he breaks back in, almost like an option. The will's out of the box, so it's really these two playing football on each other. And great move by Winton. A little bit of a tug right there, and then he gets underneath, and can he make makes a play on the football. Looks like Zach's going there the whole time. And just in a, a spectacular play by Winton. Good protection. Like I said, he was a force on the inside. And this is some of the things that kind of hurt that, you know, first and 10, get a shot play. Kenny Lawler on a post. We have two deep posts. You don't like it. You got Dembski in the flat. But... You know, like when you incomplete on this one, it's a little far or it's a drop, whatever you want to say, okay? This puts them, you know, this should be second and short here, but puts them at, once again in another second and long scenario on some of these first and 10 shot plays where it's okay, you don't have to take the shot play. Take the underneath, the underneath, you know, execute the underneath, puts them in second and long. Once again, Winton McManus for the Argo fans. Kenny Lawler is going to break this way. You're going to get a dig, and you're going to get a dig in the middle of the field and two crossing routes. And you're going to when you're trying to avoid the middle of the field, you're trying to le- get the linebacks to leave. You run swing routes to open up all this stuff on the inside. Watch what happens. Okay, I'm going to pause it right here. So you basically see Winton McManus is widened with the back. Okay, these guys have jumped this crossing route, and there's nobody on this receiver right here. So he's starting to settle. But watch Winton right here. This is heads-up football. He splits the difference in the two because he knows he's being dragged out so they can throw inside. And then he rallies up and helps make this turn into a drop. And again, this could put you in... I think if this is uh, if this is caught, he's falling forward and you're going for a wedge. But because Winton's there, he causes an incompletion. And just kind of watch him right here. Works for width, works for width. Then all of a sudden he shows back up in the line. And the ball's incomplete. You can see it better from this angle. And again, that's him right here. Boom, right there. I'm open in the mesh. Winton's like, ah, I'm going to go recover. He's a little wide out of his mesh. Could have stopped a little sooner to get away from him. But once again, he's making big plays. 
causing issues. Big run by Brady. His ability to make lateral cuts and his strong lower body is amazing. Center does a great job of this push. Okay, Newfeld does a great job on Sopic. And the tackle does a great job pushing this all down. And again, Winton's right there. Brady just makes a miss. Makes that one miss. Okay. Terry Wilson's in the game. Uh, zone read. Pulls it. He's got an opportunity to throw it on the perimeter. Uh, once Benji Franklin makes another great play. Uh, there's a couple of things could have been cleaned up, I think, a little cleaner. And I'll pause it. Like three guys in man-to-man, -man, three routes they got to figure out, and they have to figure it out on the fly. So one's going out. One, one's going vertical. One's going out. One's going in. So they have to figure that out on the fly. So watch what happens. I pause it right here. The one going out, Benji's starting to take it. He's taking the in one. And I pause it again. There's the halfback. He didn't take anybody. Benji started to take this one, and then he recognized what the quarterback's trying to do. He's trying to throw this corner out, and Benji leaves. This is really good instinctual football from a corner. Now, Kenny, I would be telling Kenny to go at a higher angle, go to the back pylon, and then if it's thrown up to that area up there, he can't make the play. But it's a little short on his angle. He, he kind of bended it down a little bit so Benji can make a play. But heads up play, Toronto. I, I, I thought the Toronto defensive backs did a really good job all game. But again, like from, I would have wanted that throw to be up there so Benji can't even make a play on the ball. He can't be able to do both, but great play, great execution. Now, the very next play, this is, I talked about a couple of drops in the game. Up here, there's going to be a corner round. And here, and you, why do you call it a corner? Because you're running to the corner of the end zone. That's why they're called corner routes. And I love the angle. Okay, Wheatful. It's just, just, ah, it's just got to make that play. Whether, I don't know, he runs it down pretty good. High hands, just got to force him and finish. You know, right here, this is fourth quarter, right? They're taking a lead in the fourth quarter if this is, if this is caught. This is great timing, great throw. They just don't finish. I like Wilson's plan. Gets it out quickly. You can see it right there, just misses it. Ah, force those hands together to find a way. 24-16, seven minutes left, still within this. Zach comes back. Amos with a great recognition of the pattern concept and what is happening. He gets a great interception and flips the field. You get two receivers. They're both going to run posts. They're going to clear everything out, and then you're going to get this action. But what I love that Amos does is he just looks in here, and he sees nobody releasing. So he's like, well, if there's nobody in the flats, and I'm a flat player, I don't need to stay in the flats. So he just keeps retreating, and Zach just doesn't see that. And, you know, this is a monster throw for Zach coming right back in after he's stitched up and taped up. But it's just Amos is underneath it. He can make the play on the interception, return it for big yardage, put them in field goal range. I believe they get a field goal off that turnover. Uh, the next interception, you know, this is, uh, this is Priester, I believe. One, two, three four, five, six, and seven coming. So that tells Zach, and the other thing it tells Zach, that there's only five defensive backs right here, that it's zero. It's zero, zero coverage. Means they're going to rush one more than they can protect. Um, and that's right here coming off this edge. He has to throw it quickly. So you can see him know it immediately and just throw it to a space. They're running the same concept where he runs a corner route, he runs a hitch, and he runs a hitch. Normally you throw it to the inside one, 
And what happens is Priester goes, I know what this route is. And I'm not going to back up because he should be terrified that somebody goes right by him and they still throw it up. But he sits on it because he knew the route was coming or he recognized this little movement means they like to run that hitch combination with a corner, gets underneath it. That's a spe- this is my favorite play of the game. Like for him to make that play and get the pick six to ensure the change. Like that's good football IQ and instincts from him. Come on over here and watch. So like he... He says the ball's got to come out quickly, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I just take the. I'm just gonna jump in front of it. I'm guessing that it's gonna be a hitch, and I'm gonna make the play. And he guessed right. And then here's late in the game the inter- interception. Okay, by Wynton McManus once again. The pass rush is what gets there, that creates this opportunity for Winton, and he runs it all the way back inside the ten. Case Jake Ceresna once again has proven to be a great addition for this football team. Gets a hand on Zach, so this ball gets tipped up in the air, and they make the play. So a spectacular day for the Toronto Argonauts defense. Uh, some mistakes by the by the Bombers, and uh, but certainly a great day for this defense. Uh, helping them win the cup.